There was a time when Deborah would have an anxiety attack when we were just traveling one hour away from home. Now we travel all over the United States. And she's actually been to a couple of foreign countries with me. Right? Yeah, yeah. And at one time, um, she had diabetes and had to take insulin how many times a day? Four times a day. And God healed her. Yes. Amen? And so, uh, Deborah has been through a lot, but the Lord is faithful. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. So uh, I think we should go ahead and begin. And uh, I appreciate you coming all the way from the UK. Let's give them a big hand clap, please. <laughs> Praise to God. Here's what I want to try to do if I can. I want to try to teach, oh, for about um, 30, 35 minutes. Then Pastor Sassus is going to take up the offering. And then we want to pray for you um, who need healing. Is that, does that work for you? Yeah. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Um, Healing ministry takes time. How many of you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Look at somebody and say, you can't put God on a clock. Yeah. So, you know, if you say, you know, well, you know, um, you, know I, I, you know, I give this service till 1230, 1 o'clock, 130. Well, you know, if you got to go, if you got a date. We'll see you at night at 6 or, you know, 6.30 or uh, Monday or Tuesday. Um, now, you know, will I be able to pray for everybody's healing today? Look at somebody and say, please be serious. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, it's not going to happen. <laughs> you know, now, if I just did a quick assembly line, you know, we could do that. But some people cannot get healed that way. Does that make sense to you? Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, also, um, I think we got some, do we have some CDs somewhere? Okay, so by the coat rack, you can kind of visit, you know, the, the CD. I'm not giving any commercials this morning. May give commercials some other day. I want to get right to the word of the Lord. Does that work for you? Yes. Okay, so turn to second cross. Um, 2 Corinthians. And um, if you have your Bible, that'll be wonderful. If you have your iPhone, excellent. If you have your, uh, your, um, your iPad, um, I think uh, they're recording the message. Yes? And CDs are how much? How much are CDs? 25. Okay. So, um, uh, or, or you can take notes. Even better if you can get somebody else to take notes for you. Okay, you guys ready? Second Corinthians 10 verse 5. I'll pick up the thought with verse 3, so it will be helpful to you. The Apostle Paul says to the believers in Corinth and to us today, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Yes. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I'll read verse 5 again. Casting down imaginations 
and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Listen to me carefully. Every action is rooted in a thought. And so the word of God says, take every thought captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ. What then does that mean? The thought you do not take captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ sooner or later will take you captive. The Father wants you to take captive your thoughts in obedience or under obedience to his son Jesus. Look at somebody and say, your thoughts will either break you or make you. Look at somebody else and say, your thoughts will either break you or make you. Your thoughts will either retard your growth or advance you in the Holy Spirit. Listen to me now. Wrong thinking makes way for wrong or negative behavior. I want you to turn to the book of James, the half-brother of Jesus, one of the apostles, chapter 1. It's interesting, Pastor Sansusi, God speaks to his heart through the Holy Spirit and gives him Jeremiah 29, 11, which God says, I know the thoughts I have toward you. The question is, what thoughts do you have toward God? What thoughts do you have toward yourself? And what thoughts do you have toward others? Look at somebody says, it's time for you to think about what you're thinking about. James, a servant, a doulos, a bond slave, a bond slave, a doulos, um, a, 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 a bond slave, he has no uh, will of his own. His will is swallowed up in the will of his master. He has no life of his own. His life is swallowed up in the life of his master. Look at somebody say, are you a bond slave? Of Jesus Christ. Look at somebody and say, do you have your life? Or do you have his life? A doulos of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting. Look what he says now. My brothers, <laughs> my sisters, count it all joy, not if you fall into different trials, troubles, and temptations, but he says, count it all joy when you fall into trial. Look at somebody say, trials are, trials are coming. Look at somebody say, you're going to fall into a trial. Now, notice it's not even singular. Trials, tests, temptations, plural. Look at somebody say, when it rains, it be pouring. But now you're supposed to know something when you fall into these struggles, these difficulties, these adversities, these trials. You're supposed to know something. That trying or testing of your faith is supposed to work or produce. Everybody say patience. patience. Wait a minute. Produce. Work. But let patience have a perfect work that you may be full grown and complete, lacking in nothing. Wait a minute. And if any of you lack wisdom, let's, let him ask of God, and God will give it to you. Wait, let me see if I got this right. Trials produce patience and wisdom, and the whole point of a trial is not to take something away from you, but God wants to give you something. Look at somebody and say, I've been wanting to tell you this for a long time, but you definitely need some wisdom.
Huh. So that means that trials are permitted and designed by God to increase you. God's purpose behind the trial is to add to you and make you more like Jesus. Very interesting that God, by his power, could have prevented the trial. But by, in his wisdom, he permits the trial to bring you into something that he has for you. So at the end of every trial, you successfully pass by obeying the word of God and following Jesus. There is a God-given treasure. Look at somebody say, beyond the trial trial. that you pass, pass. there's a God-given treasure. Now, there are trials that come from the enemy that you know how to fight it. Those battles are yours. But then there's trials that come from the enemy you don't know how to fight. Exodus 14, 14 says, the Lord will fight for you. And then God gives Moses the wisdom to destroy the enemy. Look at somebody say, the wisdom of God God empowers you you to overcome the enemy. enemy. I'll just reference it. You don't have to turn there. I'll be true to the word. 2 Chronicles 20.15 says, the battle is not yours. This battle belongs to God. It's interesting that in 2 Chronicles 20.25, after the enemy was defeated, because there was a word of wisdom and a word of prophecy given, and the instructions were followed, the enemy was supernaturally defeated, and the Bible says that the sons of Israel gathered and spoil the enemy's goods. Look at somebody say, at the end of the trial, trial, when you obey God's word, word, you'll march into the enemy's camp, camp, and God will add to you. you. Now, don't worry, I'm going to take my time. Look at somebody say, he's going to take his time. Because look at somebody and say, because you definitely need the word of the Lord. (laughs) What does this mean? If the whole point of the trial is that you be lacking in nothing, then the trial is designed by God to advance you and increase you. Then the trial is the thing that God uses to make you rich in some way, and that's why you're to be joyful. A trial is what God uses to give you wisdom and patience so that you can handle either the spiritual wealth, the mental wealth, the emotional wealth, the physical health, or even financial wealth that he's going to deposit into your life. Nehemiah 8.10 says the joy of the Lord is your strength. So when you begin to walk with God and work with God in the middle of your trial, look at somebody and say, you need to do so with some joy. And some laughter. The joy of the Lord is your strength to get you through the trial so you can get your wealth and your wisdom. Look at somebody say, and the last time I checked, you need some wealth and some wisdom. Look at him and smile. And then look at him and say, Jesus, please give him some wisdom. Catch me now. There is only one thought to have about any situation that I'm in, and that's the thought that the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus is having about it. Look at somebody say, take every thought captive. Look at somebody say, every action's rooted in the thought. So in a trial or a bad circumstance, I cannot afford to have or meditate on any thought that the word of God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit didn't give me about that situation. So when you're walking with God, you must be submitting yourself to the way Jesus thinks. 
how Jesus perceives that situation to be. That means that every difficulty and every struggle has an upgrade attached to it. Ah, look at somebody say, he's trying to get you to see your struggle differently. Look at somebody say, through God's eyes. But it takes discernment to perceive the upgrade and wisdom to step into it for the, your benefit and the benefit of others. The whole point, I say again, is that you be lacking in nothing. Trials are the means of God to get something to you, for you, in you, through you, for your benefit and the benefit of others. What does this mean then? Without a trial, you stay in a place of lack. If God says the trial and you embrace it joyfully, knowing that as you think the word of God, speak the word of God, do the word of God, at the end of that trial, you have a God-given treasure. It, that's God's way of making and increasing you, giving you a deposit of wisdom and wealth and making you more like Jesus, then the purpose of the trial is to add to you what's lacking. So if you don't go through the trial successfully, you stay in lack. God uses the trial as a way and a means to bring you into the wisdom that will cause you to come into a supernatural supply. Look at somebody say, through the trial, you gain wisdom. Then say, through wisdom, you turn lack into a supernatural supply. 1 Corinthians 2.16 says, you are to have the mind of Christ. What is the implication of this? I want to learn how to think with God. And when I learn how to think with God, it enables me to receive what Jesus has for me through the trial. Here's the issue. Wrong thinking will not allow me to perceive or to receive what Jesus has for me. Ephesians 4.23 says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Look at somebody and smile and say, I've been wanting to tell you this for a long time. <laughs> the problem is in your mind. Your mind has to be renewed to receive the revelation of God so you can access the resources of heaven so God's will can be done. Your trial is the opportunity God has allowed to bring you into the mind of Christ so that you can learn how to think like Christ and be brilliant in the spirit. Everybody say radiant in the spirit. Uh, a glow with the spirit. You learn how to think brilliantly about God, yourself, your situation, as well as others. In other words, the mind of Christ opens you up to see, to hear, to know what heaven is saying and doing about your current circumstances. Look at somebody say, right thinking, right thinking. will always take you into faith. We'll take you into faith. Okay, now, look at somebody say, he's just warming up. <laughs> okay. Your starting place will always determine the outcome. The wrong starting place will not lead to the outcome you find desirable. Now, I'm going to say, I'm gonna say something. You're not going to agree with me, but it's okay. I'm brilliant. <laughs> no, years ago, God told me. He said, I made you brilliant. You're not going to believe what I'm about to say. You're not going to accept it, but it's okay. Look at somebody and say, put it on file. It on file. But remember, the preacher is good looking and he's brilliant. I'm going to look at too. I just want to let you know that. <laughs> I think brilliantly about myself. Well, wait a minute. God thinks brilliantly about me. Because to be brilliant is to be good. I am letting you know the thoughts I'm having about you, and they're what? Good thoughts. That means God thinks good things about me. So if I'm going to thank with God, I need to thank good things about. 
So, you know, I tell people, I'm the best looking person in the room. <laughs> you should disagree and say, oh, no, you second. Because I am. Look at somebody say, the issue is not what other folk are saying about you. Look at somebody say, it's what you're saying about yourself. So if you're saying something that's going to tear down my personal esteem, I'm giving you the hand. You just don't know what you're talking about. Because I'm anointed and good looking and brilliant. And by the way, it's working for me. Oh, no, no, no. God said I was brilliant. He really told me I was brilliant. I disagree with God. Look at somebody say, you need to get a word from God. <laughs> That's all right. Hmm. Yeah. Here's my statement that you're not going to like. Look at somebody say, put on your seatbelt. Here's, here's my statement. Things don't go wrong, they start wrong. Because the seeds of destruction are always in the foundation. Your life is built upon your thinking processes. From the day of your consciousness to the present. Your thinking processes are your foundation. Your foundations are always conclusions. Your life, where you are right now, is based upon, is a result of, your foundations and your conclusions. Amen. Where you are in your spiritual health, your conclusions. Where you are in your mental health, your conclusions. Where you are in your emotional health, your conclusions. Where you are in your physical health, your conclusions. Conclusions always have foundations. Where you are financially, your conclusions. Here's the problem. What if you got a wrong foundation and a wrong conclusion? You make decisions based upon foundations and conclusions. So if you got a wrong foundation and a wrong conclusion, you're going to make wrong decisions. Your directions are determined by your decisions. So whatever thought that has taken you captive, Contrary to the word of God, everybody say it's a wrong foundation. foundation. Whatever thought has taken you captive contrary to the word of God, it's a wrong conclusion. Whatever thought has taken you captive contrary to the word of God, it's causing you to make wrong decisions. That's going to move you in wrong directions, which means you're going to end up in a wrong destiny. Notice you being prophetic today. Said God wants to bring you back from your captivity. Amen. If you have a wrong destiny, you got a wrong history. If you got a wrong history, you're leaving a wrong legacy. Look at somebody say, things don't go wrong. They start wrong. Here's the thing about the revelation of the word of God and divine intent. <laughs> it can do a restart. Somebody in this sanctuary today needs a restart. Somebody needs to push the reset button. Look at somebody and smile and say, the preacher says. <laughs> that good looking preacher says. That anointed preacher is saying, you need a restart. You need a reset. You must find the starting place where God can connect with you and prepare you for the upgrade that he actually has there. The problem is this. I've done this. This is how I know. You can get in a trial and you can get so close up to it, you can't see any other option. 
Look at somebody and say, you don't want to do that anymore. Sometimes you got to step back into it and get it from it, get in the word of the Lord so the Holy Spirit can show you the starting place of connection so, so that God can make you an overcomer. Amen. First Corinthians 1.30 says of God, you're in Christ Jesus. You're in Jesus and Jesus is in you. Look at somebody says, look at somebody says, says Jesus is in you. Heaven's attracted to you. Look at somebody said, the resources of heaven will respond to the Lord Jesus in you. Let me see if I got this right. God, by definition, is a supernatural. Therefore, in Christ Jesus, God does the supernatural in your life. So Jesus has come to expand who I am for the Father's glory, my good, and the good of others. Wait a minute. I think I'm getting something. Hmm. So the father's not really concerned about the mistakes that I'm making trying to do his will. Okay, let me see if I, let me let me explain it this way. I ain't come down yet, so it's time for you to come down. I think I'll start over here. How many of you are moms? Raise your hand. Moms. Moms. How many of you are dads? Raise your hand. Dads. Okay. You got a baby. The baby's crawling. The baby stands up. The baby falls down. You don't say bad baby. <laughs> you fell down. You celebrate the stand. Here's my question. Where did you get that from? The baby has learned to stand. Now, you say, come here, baby. Takes two steps and fall. You never go, bad baby. <laughs> bad baby, you only took two steps. You fell down. Bad baby. Oh, no, 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 no. You celebrate the two steps. Because you're not concerned about the mistakes that are being made, learning. Now, here's my question. Where did you get that from? Oh, 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 did you mothers do something that's literally crazy? Y'all crazy mothers. Your birthday's coming. You give your child the money to get the gift for you. They bring the gift to you that you probably bought. And then you celebrate it when they give it to you. Where did you get that one from? <laughs> Look at somebody say, it's time for you to celebrate your successes. Mistakes are part of the process of learning. Look at somebody say, in life, you better as well get used to the learning. <laughs> in other words, the love and acceptance you show your children came from God the Father. First the natural, then the supernatural. You must love the learning. You know, it's interesting because Romans 11, 36 says, for of him, through him, and to him are all things. <laughs> to him be the glory forever. Amen. So the Father commands you, commands something to be given to you, and the very thing that he gives you, he asked it back. But the Father wants from you, he intends to give you first. The Father initiates all of this. Wait a minute. The Father and Jesus want you to experience divine love, and the Holy Spirit puts his hands on your shoulders and says, stay here, stay in the love of the Father and Jesus. Look at somebody say, stay here in the eternal love of God. Now, I've been going about 30 minutes. Can you give me 10 or 15 more? Because some of y'all need this. 
Everything that happens in your life is relational. Every trouble, every trial, every hardship is an opportunity for you to discover by revelation and reality who and what the Father and Jesus want to be in you, through you, and for you. Uh, this is interesting. Revelation 12, 21 says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, listen to me. Listen to me carefully. Pay attention. Look at somebody say, pay attention to that good looking preacher. <laughs> Here's the truth. Listen to what I'm saying. In reality, be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. In reality, you're not really being challenged by the enemy. Here is the truth. In your life in the spirit and spiritual warfare, in the final analysis, you're not really being challenged by wicked people or oppositional forces. Here's the truth of the kingdom. You're really only being challenged by the goodness of God. Be not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. What is God teaching you in a moment when someone doesn't like you or opposes you? God is challenging you to give some of his goodness to the person who's fighting against you. That person really needs you to release the goodness of God into their life at that moment. God is teaching you to respond to ugly with the Holy Spirit and be good to the person who's being bad to you. Can you really love your enemy when it matters most? Jesus said in Matthew 5, 44, love your enemies. What if I said to you that once you really grow up in Christ, you can never really be challenged by a negative, ever? What if you could only be challenged by a fruit of the Spirit? What if in a trial... The most powerful weapon against the enemy is not a gift of the Spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit. What if you can defeat the enemy by being joyful, by being patient, by being humble, by self-restraint and self-control, by having a peaceful tranquility? What if you were to weary your enemy by the joy of the Lord? What if you were to overwhelm the enemy by your love for God and your love for people? Why, what if you can depress the enemy by your peace and tranquility? What if you can make the enemy so tired and weary and depressed and frustrated that the enemy required therapy? <laughs> what if the enemy was so discouraged and disappointed that he wants to get away from you? What if the demons that were assigned to your life hate their assignment? What if you punish the enemy by the power of God and you, and, and you, and you make the enemy nervous and anxious and fearful of you? That the only time the enemy feels like he can get any rest is when you're asleep. Let me show you a process, and then we're going to shift. How many of you getting something out of this word? Let me show you a process. What happens? The first, <laughs> the first thing that happens is God permits a problem. Now, the problem may come from the enemy. Everybody say, first is the problem. Here's the thing. I can look at that problem and get nervous over it. Anxious over it, upset over it, frustrated over it. Is that going to help? No. Or I can look at the problem and say, God has permitted this problem. He could have stopped it. He allowed it. What's God getting ready to do for me? Everybody say problem. problem. What does God do about the problem? He gives you a promise. Mm -hmm. 
that's going to cause the problem to vanish. So here's the thing about a problem. When the problem comes, here's the question. If God allowed the problem, and the problem is now in my life, in what way does Jesus want to use this problem to reveal himself to me in a way I've never known him before? If God, by his power, could have prevented this problem, but he permits it, then in what way... Through this problem, Jesus wants to manifest himself to me in a way he's never manifested himself to me before. That the only way I can know God in a way I've never known him before is if he permits the problem to come. So the question is, when the problem comes, Lord Jesus, here's a problem. I'm not going to pray the problem. The problem is there. I don't need to pray the problem. The problem's there. What I want to say is, Lord Jesus, in what way, question, in what way are you trying to reveal yourself, manifest yourself to me? So I can know you more deeply and intimately so that I can know your person, your presence, and your power. Wait, so I can know your goodness. I know the thoughts I think toward you. They are good. When does God speak this? When Israel's having a problem. So when I, see, the scripture says this. Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, he says at one point, ask and you shall receive. In the original language, ask and keep on asking, shall receive. So if I say, Jesus, how you want to manifest yourself to me so I can know you more deeply and intimately, this problem. If I keep praying, sooner or later, Jesus is going to give me a promise. Look at somebody say, the promise. Everybody say, number one, the problem. So it's how I view the problem. The problem now becomes an opportunity and a possibility for me to experience more of the person, the presence, and the power of God. Wait, wait. The problem can do one of two things. The problem can take me captive in my imagination, in my life, and get in the way of my intimate knowledge of God, casting down imaginations and every high thing that is also self against the word or the intimate knowledge of God. That issue can, or I can start talking to God and get a promise that will increase my intimate knowledge of God when the provision comes. Everybody say, problem. Promise, Promise. Provision. provision. The problem can keep me from the intimate knowledge of God. So it's not the problem. It's how I think about it. This problem becomes an opportunity and a possibility for me to get to know God in a way I never knew him before. Because thinking about the problem any other way isn't going to help me. <laughs> Look at somebody say, have you been thinking about the problem the right way? Or have you been thinking about the problem the wrong way? Now look at him and say, if you've been thinking about it the wrong way, how's that working for you? <laughs> it don't work. Now, 
just to make you think. The, wish, the woman with the issue of blood had a problem. But she heard of Jesus. Faith comes by hearing. She heard Jesus is good. <laughs> and he heals people. That news became a promise. She actually heard that if you can touch Jesus, you get healed. So she said, I'll touch him and get a provision. She, Jesus felt the power when it went out. She felt the power when it went in. The Greek word for virtue means dunamis. It means power. Everybody say problem. problem. Promise. promise. Provision. Jairus, the ruler of the synagogue, had a problem. His daughter was dying. But he had heard that this Jesus is good. That he thought good to our people. Look at somebody and say, that became a promise. When the girl died, Jesus said, stop. It ain't over. Only what? Believe. Everybody say, promise. promise. The girl was raised to life. The leper had a problem. He said, Lord, if you want to. I don't know if you do or not. You can cleanse me. Everybody say problem. problem. Jesus gives him a word, I want to. Actually, in the original language, that's not what it says. That's true, but it's not what it says in the original language. Would you like to know what it says in the original language? Jesus actually said, I want to with all my heart. <coughs> I didn't just want to. I want to with all my heart. That leper got spiritually healed of leprosy, mentally healed of leprosy, emotionally healed of leprosy, physically healed of leprosy. He had a problem, he got a promise, and all of a sudden when Jesus touches him, his leprosy disappears. Everybody say problem. problem. Promise. Promise. Everybody say provision. provision. And here's the thing. It ain't my goodness. It's his goodness. Amen. I'm getting ready to shift. But Acts 10, 38 says something very interesting. Look what it says. It says, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good. I know the thoughts I have toward you. Good thoughts. So these people who would search for Jesus and seek Jesus out with all their heart, <laughs> look at somebody say, they find Jesus. Yeah. Look at somebody say, in spite of the problem." They would find the promise of God and find provision in the person and power of Jesus. And Hebrews 13 and 8 says, Jesus is the same yesterday and today. I submit to you that the goodness of God is in this sanctuary today. I submit to you. <laughs> you know, this is an amazing thing to me. What did Moses know? Moses knew the goodness of God. Moses says, let me find grace in your eye. Show me your way that I might know you. He says, show me your glory. Exodus 33, 34. God's response is, all right, I'm going to walk by you. I'm going to proclaim the name of the Lord. But what I want you to understand, when I proclaim my nature and my character, you want to see my glory? I'm going to make all my goodness come before you. <laughs> Look at somebody say, if you want to see the glory, you need to catch the goodness. Look at somebody saying, and, and he hasn't changed. Look at somebody say, God is still the same. God is 
The scripture says the goodness of God is forever. This will make you think. I'm trying to transition. I'm really trying, but I have to do this. Do you know when the glory cloud came in Second, Second Chronicles? They were singing a song. Here was their song. Praise the Lord for you are good and your mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord for you are good and your mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord for you are good and your mercy endures forever. Try it with me. Praise you, Lord, for you are good and your mercy endures forever. Praise you, Lord, for you are good and your mercy endures forever. Praise you, Lord, for you are good and your mercy endures forever. That's when the glory cloud came. I mean, Jesus is going to heal people after we take up the offering. Look, look, listen to me. That's a given. No, no. It's a given. Uh, it's a given. Ain't no problem. Look at somebody said, people are going to get healed. It ain't no problem. <laughs> I'm in California. A woman has the white of the eye but no eyeball. Look at somebody say, but praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He's good. He's and his mercy endures forever. We watch God make an eyeball. Make it blue like the other one. And she goes, I can't see. Look at somebody say, praise the Lord, he is good. His mercy endures forever. Ah, we were at a church. This guy, when he was 11 years of age, he fell on a cactus and severed his nerve, lost his finger dexterity. I never prayed for him. He was praying for somebody else that we were ministering to to get healed. But look at somebody say, but praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He, is good. he is good. And his mercy endures forever. All of a sudden, he starts doing this. I'm in Michigan. A guy had taken a bullet to the chest. There were fragments. He was in pain 10 years. They almost had to amputate his arm. His last two fingers were artificial, not real. Couldn't move them. Look at somebody say, but praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God, is God is good. His mercy endures forever. Mercy endures forever. I don't know what God did. All I know is his pain disappeared. And his two artificial fingers became real, and they did this. Look at somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He, is he is good. His mercy endures forever. Hey, I was in Chicago. This, <laughs> this girl was on crutches. I prayed for her. I never pray for her physical healing. I prayed for her spiritual, mental, and emotional healing, and she got it. In fact, she was upset with me. She hobbles back to her seat with her crutches, sits down, because she had to take care of some spiritual business that was getting in the way of her physical healing. She hears a voice say, dance. She had two crutches. She gets up and starts dancing. Lays her crutches at the altar. Gives her testimony. Pastor Kemp never did pray for me for what he was supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> she just don't know. I prayed for the thing that would open up the pathway. But look at somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He, is he is good. And his mercy endures forever. Mercy endures forever. Do you think I care? What she says about Pastor Kim? I'm anointed and good looking. <laughs> See that, Kim? <laughs> I'm thinking brilliantly. Now, just in case you think I'm just talking, I almost failed the sixth grade, but I was a who's who all American academically. 
And when I was in graduate school, I decided to make a B by not showing up for a final. Because what's the point of making straight A's? What's the point? <laughs> and Jesus touched my head where I almost didn't have to study. I could look at the book, go to paragraph three on page 72, take a picture, and it's on. So when I talk to you about Jesus can make you brilliant, And I came from a family of intellectuals. My dad had his doctorate. Mom got her master's. And ain't neither one of them as smart as me. <laughs> they try to be blessed, they sweethearts. <laughs> and my dad, honestly, is one of the smartest people I know. And I know I have met a lot of people. He's brilliant. My dad in the natural is brilliant. He, okay. How many people read physics for fun? <laughs> That's my dad. Who's 94 and still at home. Mom's 86, still at home. Now, I don't have my dad's natural brilliance, but I got some supernatural brilliance. Well, um, let me, uh, I've been preaching now for 50 minutes, actually almost 53. And one of the things that I have learned is the mind can only receive as much as the behind can endure. <laughs> and right now I'm getting um, your behind is speaking to me. And your behind is saying, please shut up. <laughs> I'm so tired and weary. Please let me stand. I need a break. And so since your behind is screaming, I'm going to listen to your behind. <laughs> so I want you to stand to your feet and give your behind a break. <laughs> and the pastor's coming, and he's going to take care of the offering. <laughs> uh, and the Lord had told me earlier when I came up here, I was supposed to tell you that we're going to worship this offering together. So let's just take a moment to do that. Everyone, some of you lift your hands, some of you fall on your face, pour out your soul. If you seek for me and you search for me, or you search for me and you seek for me, have it which way you want it, I will be found of you. And I will bring you out of your captivity. Hallelujah. Lord, hallelujah. Lift up your voices. Those of you who know how to pray, hallelujah. Worship. Praise. Lord, we're thanking you. The ushers are coming forward right now. Praise God as we're doing this. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, they're going to fill these bags this morning. Amen. Because, Lord, ministry takes money. And, Lord, you own the cattle on the thousand hills and the gold in every mine. Lord, oh, we just praise you. Keep on praising them, folks. Hallelujah. With enthusiasm. With enthusiasm. Lord, I'm going to give in this offering with enthusiasm. Not because I have to, not because it's asked, but with enthusiasm. I'm sowing seed. That's going to harvest a crop. It's going to bring forth a harvest. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Lord, write it on my mind. Put it in my conscience. Speak it into my heart. Lord, what shall I write here? What shall I give? Hallelujah. Lord, in Jesus' name, oh, hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We give you glory. Hallelujah. We give you glory, hallelujah. We give you glory, hallelujah. For you are worthy, truly worthy, Lord. Blessed be your name, O our God, hallelujah. Praise you, hallelujah. Praise you, hallelujah. Praise you, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. For his 
Let's say it together. For His goodness and mercy endureth forever. God bless you. you. May be seated. Thank you, Lord. Pastor Kemp, you can start back as we're receiving this. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. We'll just wait till you've given and then we'll proceed on. Praise to the Lord. You can praise God while we're doing this, though. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise to the Lord. Hey, Jimmy, would you hand me that water down there at your left foot? Hallelujah. Okay, you guys ready? Are you ready? Now, 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 in case you haven't noticed, I'm African American. <laughs> and uh, in my culture, we have a tradition that we talk in church. Amen. So um, look at somebody and say, You are a person of color this morning, <laughs> and you're going to be talking in church. <laughs> now, um, I have to give you a few instructions. Will you pay attention to my instructions? Uh, here's my instruction. Now, you need to catch this. Uh, I should probably tell you that, number one, I don't take credit when people get healed. I don't take blame when they don't. It's not my success, and it's not my failure. If you're going to take credit, you should also take blame. And if you're going to think it's your success, then you're going to think it's your failure. I am not, a, I am not convinced that God works because of me, I'm convinced God works in spite of me because he's good. <laughs> the gifting is not about me, it's about his goodness towards you. You understand? Okay. So it's very important that you get that. Number two, I want you to concentrate now on the word of the Lord that I give you from the Bible. It is, you're mistaken if you think that I have to lay hands on you. You're really, really mistaken. I mean, I don't mind doing it, and sooner or later, in the course of these meetings, I'll lay hands on people, but I'm not really all that necessary. Here's why I'm not. Jesus said, where two or three come together in my name, he said, I am there. Have we come together in Jesus' name? Yes. Then Jesus is here. Jesus said, if any two or three of you agree as touching anything you'll ask, it shall be done by the Father. Will you agree with me today that Jesus will touch people right where they are and heal them? Yes. You agree with me? Now, let me, uh, let me give you Bible, because... Uh, Mark 16 says that the disciples preached 
everywhere what they preached. They preached the word, and God confirmed the word with signs following. So I have to give God something to confirm, which means I have to share the written word of God with you. It won't take me but a few minutes, but I need you to concentrate and focus and receive into your heart the word of the Lord, even though you know it. Look at somebody say, let the word of God be fresh to you today. So Exodus 15, 26, God says, I am Jehovah Rophe. I'm the Lord, your physician. I'm the Lord, your healer. I'm the Lord who heals you. Okay? Exodus 23, 25 says, you're going to serve the Lord your God. And the Lord says, I'm going to take all your disease away. Okay? Psalm 103, matter of fact, I think I'll just turn there. Because it says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits. Why? Because he's good. Who forgives all your sins, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with, everybody say, loving kindness, loving kindness. and tender mercies. Wow. And so then Psalm 107, verse 20 says, and he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Here's what's amazing. The next verse says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his what? Goodness. Even in the Old Covenant, it's putting healing and goodness together. So when I say the Lord is your physician, when I say the Lord is your healer, when I say that the Lord heals you, I'm the Lord that heals you and the Lord takes disease away, that he heals all your diseases, that God is sending his word and healing you, and that you should praise him for his goodness, God's word is healing you now. This is his word. Let me read a little bit more. You know, sometimes people give me more credit than what I deserve. They think I got something to do with all this. But Isaiah 53 says that Jesus was wounded for your transgressions. Jesus was bruised for your iniquities. The punishment that brings you peace was placed upon him, and by his sufferings at the whipping post, we are healed. First Peter, and I want to turn there. First Peter. 2.24 says this. That Jesus, his own self, bear your sins in his own body on the tree, that you being dead to sin should live to right righteousness, by whose stripes, by whose sufferings at the whipping post you were healed. Okay. Now, here's what I'm going to do. When I am praying for you, you are not to pray. Why? Because when I'm praying for you, the reason you're not to pray is because when you're praying, you're transmitting, you're not receiving. I want to say this to the women because y'all cheat and pray in your head. No cheating, women. Now, a brother was just simply going to his nothing box and received. <laughs> But since you women don't have nothing boxes, you're thinking all the time. <laughs> the first miracle will be for you just to quiet your mind and receive. <laughs> Seriously. Number two. Um, I let me just read 
read this to you, but this is kind of important. Look at somebody said this is kind of important. If you remember, in the, um, in the book of John, there was an angel that troubled the waters, and whoever got in the waters was healed. And so um, there's a relationship between healing and angels. Of course, they minister the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Um, I don't believe that you could tell angels what to do. The scripture doesn't support that. In fact, Psalm 103, verse 20 says, Bless the Lord, you his angels that excel in strength. And they do God's commandments, hearkening to the voice of his word. So let's say God decides to bring angels into the service, and God says to those angels, I want you to touch people with my power, and I want you to release the healing that Jesus purchased. Okay? So, okay, here's what we're going to do. You ready? Um, In one of my visions of heaven... Uh, there was an angel, and he said, you're going to take God's healing power to the nations. And that happened. Okay? And so there are angels that go with me. You know, look at somebody and say, poor angels. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I, can I mention this? Because this is just my humor, and I can't help it. <laughs> Even though my wife is a lot funnier than me. Um, she really is. <laughs> but the Bible says in Psalm 91, he will give his angels a command concerning you that they'll keep you in all your ways. See, uh, if you have, people say, I got a guardian angel. No, you don't. No, you don't. You got guardian angels. Let me tell you why. Because every now and then your angel needs a break from you. <laughs> Can you see the angel right now? Lord God Almighty, mm, I need a break. Can you send somebody else to watch this one? (laughs) Only thing about it is he gives his angels plural command concerning you. If I can say this, just like you sleep to get rest for your physical body, the angels go to heaven to be in the presence of the Father. That's That's their refreshment. There's a reason I say that, but I'm not going to go into it now. Okay, let me ask you this. How many of you are in physical pain right now? Stand up, if you're able to stand. If you're not able to stand, don't stand up. Just put a hand up. Are you in physical pain? No matter what the reason is. Stand up, stand up. Are you standing? If you've got physical pain, if you're able, and if you're not, the Lord knows. Okay, here's what's going to happen. Um, I'm going to read some testimonies of healing. God's going to start touching you that are standing. When you feel your pain starting to decrease, you come up here and you stand and you look at the people. Listen to my instruction again. When you feel your pain starting to decrease, Come up here and stand, and then when God, you know, God will complete your healing while you're up here. And then we'll have you testify to the goodness of God. Okay? All I want you to do is pay attention. Has it started already? All I want you, I told you, God don't need me. Um, <laughs> ah, that's funny. He isn't even waiting for me to do my thing. (laughs) Uh, God's already started. When you feel it starting to decrease, I mean, you you know, God, he's not even waiting. God's already started moving. God's already healing people. You know, I'll just read some testimonies. Uh, In California, there was a woman named Alma. She had three fused discs 
uh, sciatic nerve and a left leg that was short, inch and a half for seven years, and God healed her. Um, in Missouri, there was a boy named Dennis. He had histoplasmosis, which affects the, nurse, uh, the immune system for the lifetime. It caused all of his organs to swell, his liver, his kidneys, his pancreas, his gallbladder. As a result, you couldn't touch him because of the severe pain. He had just spent 29 days in the hospital, and doctors said he'd never be cured. He'd be on meds the rest of his life. Um, one of his relatives brought him to a meeting. God healed him. Uh, all his problems disappeared. Uh, 16 years of age now, no problems. Look at somebody said, Jesus is a healer. Angie, for nine years, had no feeling in her feet. Jesus touched her, her feeling returned, <laughs> and she was healed. David had pain in his back, his hands, his legs. He had rheumatoid arthritis, muscle soreness. Jesus healed him. Phyllis, for four years, had a short right arm that grew out an inch. She had a strain in her shoulder for four years. God healed her. Olga, for a year and a half, was deaf. Hearing was restored. Uh, for a year and a half, had neck and hip pain, was healed. Tilla, for two years, had a cracked elbow. The arm would not straighten, and it straightened. Um, somebody's being healed right over here. When you feel your pain decreasing, come up. God will continue doing it. The arm straightened, it was healed. Maria, for five years, had no feeling in her right arm. The feeling returned. She could not close her left hand. Jesus touched her, she was able to do it. Since childhood, she was deaf in her left ear, she was healed. Terry had a broken ankle for seven months. Pain disappeared, and she was healed. Another person had stomach pain for three years, was healed. Uh, Miguel had a short left leg, two inches, 42 years since birth was healed. This couple in uh, Texas couldn't get pregnant. I had a word of knowledge that God was going to give them a son. It happened. Um, there, was a, um, um, <laughs> there was a young man. He had one. This was interesting. This happened in Texas. He had one foot shorter than the other, and God grew out his foot. A woman in Chicago, she had five growths in her female organs. I had a word of knowledge about it. She went back to the doctor. They disappeared. Shirley, for seven years, had a left hip, left hip pain, left leg pain, and it healed. In her right eye, she had glaucoma. It disappeared. Rob, for 10 years, had missing cartilage in his right leg. It was healed. Um, Tyree, for three years, was deaf, was healed. Marge, for three years, had a rotator cuff and a shoulder problem. Nerves in the problem in the shoulder was healed. Gary, for five years, had a metal plate in his arm. One rod in his back for a year and a half was healed. Bernice, had, for nine years, had pain all over her body. She had been shot in the leg. She was healed by Jesus. Courtney, for 11 years, uh, she had suffered um, emotionally. She got an emotional healing. For two years, she had MS was healed. She had partial vision loss over the MS that was healed. This was interesting. For three months, whatever happened, she couldn't bend her thumb, and then God healed it, and she bent it. Um, another person um, had nerve damage in their feet and was healed. Dennis, for two and a half years, he had a short leg. It grew out. Um, he had numb feet, numb hands. He had a hose in his spine that God filled. Uh, there was a, a foreign substance in his back that God removed. His back, his neck was healed, and he had cancer, and God healed his cancer. Uh, there was a person who couldn't smell. God healed him. They could smell good. Another person was farsighted. They could read without glasses. Uh, Steve, for four months, twisted his back. His left and hip pain was healed. Kenneth, for five years, had arthritis. Back pain was healed. Uh, I think that's Ishmael. For 52 years, his left leg was an inch and a half short. He had metal pins in the leg, and his neck was healed. Lewis, for 18 years, had growth spurs on his spine, disappeared. His right ear that was deaf was healed, and his pain and arthritis was healed. Jennifer, for 20 years, she had back pain and a brain injury that was healed, and her right deaf ear was healed. Becky, for two years, her left hand had no feeling, and her nerves was healed. 
Eva had, for three months, had a growth, a lump in her throat, disappeared. For Frank, for 33 years, <laughs> had, had no cushion between the bone and was healed. Angie, for, uh, Angel, for seven years, had pain due to cracks that was healed. This was interesting. This person had a short thumb that grew out. A man had a short leg five inches long, and God created five inches of bone, skin, muscle, tissue. Look at me. Why you have pain? Yes. Where do you have it? You should get ready in just a moment. Well, um... I should get a microphone. Hey, Jimmy, you're ready for me. Um, who already has 100% um, of your pain gone? Raise your hand. You like the first one up here, wasn't you? Um, yeah, you should record. Got a camera? Use your camera. And you get to write. I want somebody to start praising God right about now. See, now you won't be able to say that I laid hands on you. <laughs> You'll just say, just, I was in a church service and, and the handsome preacher was just talking. <laughs> and while the handsome preacher was talking, God wasn't paying attention to the handsome preacher, but God just touched me and healed me. But make sure you say the handsome preacher was talking. We just. <laughs> now, this is funny. Now, this is, this is funny. In uh, Dayton, Ohio, this woman, I asked her, I said, um, I said, where do you go to church? She said, Bedside Baptist. That meant I sleep on Sunday morning. <laughs> she had cancer, but because of the goodness of God, God healed her. She goes back to the doctor, can find no cancer. She sends me an email. Dear handsome pastor. <laughs> I'm sure people who don't know the joke thought she is flirting with the pastor. She didn't ever have no cancer. I think we deleted the handsome part. But I kept it in my heart. What's your first name? Michelle. What was your problem? Um, my back and my legs. I could barely stand. You could barely stand. And how long had you had that problem? I don't know. Ever, I would sit down, and I wouldn't be able to get back up for a long time. You could ask my husband. He'd have to help me get up. How many years? Yes. Recently. Recently. And then I'm, I'm trying to do my thing, and God, like, interrupts my thing. <laughs> I guess he thinks he's God or in charge or something. <laughs> Look at somebody say, God's really got a sense of humor. Now, see, he confirms my word that he works in spite of me. I ain't got nothing to do with it. I just start healing people. This is, let me tell you this funny story. Don't worry. Some of you are getting healed right now. So, <laughs> how many of you ever heard of Reinhard Bunke? Okay. So, I'm in, I'm in, uh, I'm in Orlando because how many of you ever heard of Daniel Kalinda? Raise your hands. Okay. You haven't heard of Daniel? Daniel's taken over. He's, he's Reinhardt's spiritual son. He's president now of Christ for the Nations. He's just like Reinhardt, just like him. So, you know, Reinhardt, uh, Reinhardt was looking for somebody to take over his ministry. So um, Eric Gilmore is writing Reinhardt, and he gives him a tape of Daniel Kalinda because they went to the fire school down there with John Kilpatrick and Steve Hill. So Reinhardt goes, listen to the tape. I like that young man. I want to meet that young man. So, Reinhardt. So, Reinhardt would preach six times, give one time to Daniel, five times, two times to Daniel, four times, three times to Daniel. So, then one time they get ready to do a big meeting, and Reinhardt can't show up. So, Daniel's upset. Daniel's upset. He says, Reinhardt, I need you to show up. And, because, uh, see, I was down there teaching young evangelists for that ministry. So, to heal the sick for God to work miracles. And so right, uh, Daniel decides to pray. Everybody say problem, problem. promise, promise. Provision. provision. 
So God speaks to <laughs> Daniel says, do you think that I'm going to hold myself back because Reinhardt ain't coming to the meeting? <laughs> so this is what Daniel tells me. They're giving announcements. And people start getting healed. Lifting up wheelchairs, walking out of them. And he said it was like popcorn. First one here, one, then one there, and then it's just a pop, 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 pop. Look at somebody and say, God don't hold back. Just because the evangelist ain't there. Look at somebody and say, because God is good. So, you got healed. I believe so. Pain is gone? All gone. All gone. <laughs> hey, I didn't bring up the dancing. No, I, I'm really happy for you. I thank you, Jesus, that you healed my sister because of your goodness. And God, I give you glory. She's healed because it is written, I'm the Lord who heals you. You go in peace and go give God a praise. Did you say one more thing? Yes. I'm very shy. This is really nerve-wracking, but I was able to do it. So. You're very shy, and this was very nerve-wracking. Well, you did real good. Dance your way to your seat. And, and, and kiss your husband. And say, you're the second most handsome man. No, you're the first handsome. You're the handsomest guy in the place. Who else is already 100% healed? What's your name? What was your problem? How long has you had it? Shelby Trombley. Um, Tronchenteric bursitis has been aggravated lately and um, tennis elbow in my left arm. And just sitting there, I had a lot of pain. I could hardly sit with my left hip and my arm, and it's totally gone. Somebody give God a praise. How long have you had it? A uh, couple, couple of years. Praise God. Bless you. It is written, I'm the Lord, yes. your healer. You, Lord. Go give him praise. Who else is already 100% healed? Yes, come. Come. Your name is? Joanne. And go ahead, Joanne. I, I have a partial tear or something. My shoulder hurts, um, but not about three years. In fact, when you were here last time, it was bothering me. And um, I don't, can't sleep on it sometimes. Like if I turn on one side, I have to turn on the other. So, But when we, I was sitting there, when we were talking earlier, it started to feel like, started to crack and feel really loose. And it almost feels like there's been gay on it. <laughs> and it doesn't. It's Holy Spirit. Yeah. All the pain's gone. Give God a praise. Bless you. Bless you. Who else got healed? 100%? Or I'm over here now? Okay. Come to the middle. Bless you. What's your name? Lori. And what was your problem? I had a pain all over. I just had open heart surgery December 2nd. I drove from Florida, didn't really know you were you, you, here. you drew from where? Florida. What I part of Florida? Um, Cape Canaveral. Oh, the Cape, yeah. I'm you, not uh, from there. I'm from here. This is my home church okay. and my family. Yeah. <laughs> so you had this problem for how long? Um, I, they said I probably had heart disease my whole life. I've had pain in my leg because I got a blood clot after the open heart surgery. This is where okay. they harvest the vein. The drive up here, I think I said the blood clots back. I'm a nurse. My leg swelled. I was starting to get the streak. Yeah. And they had a women's meeting yesterday and Colleen laid hands on me. Yeah. And she said, the blood is going to flow. The blood is going to flow. The blood yeah. is going to flow. Last night when I slept, I could feel tingling in my leg. I walked in in pain, a lot of pain in my leg, limping. I was sitting there and you were talking about healing. My leg started tingling. Yeah. Some people felt tingling. Some people felt heat. Some people feel like a cooling sensation, or some people feel like Ben Gay. I had shoulder pain my whole life. I have an arm that's weird. Last time you were here, you prayed, and my arm grew. Okay. I don't remember that, but I, 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 do. I pray for so many people, it's impossible for me to, but praise the Lord. Um, my sternum, my heart had five blockages. Uh -huh. It was about to explode. Emergency surgery within 24 hours. I went to the ER. I, I woke up. I, I couldn't sleep, and I knew I need to get to a hospital. I need to get to a hospital now. I went to the emergency room. They said within 24 hours, I probably would have been dead. My heart was about to explode. 
this church has been praying for me. They've been praying for me. And Satan said two days ago, they don't even remember you. And I get a card in the mail that I don't know when it was mailed from the women's ministry. And, I, and Satan was saying, they don't even remember you anymore. And it said, I just went to a ladies' conference down there, and the theme was keep on keeping on. And the last thing that was written after they said they're praying for him, keep on keeping on. And I went, glory. You Somebody me. ought to give God a praise. <laughs> a card, watch this, a fruit of the Spirit showing kindness defeated the enemy. Yeah. A fruit of the Spirit. Kindness, goodness defeated the enemy. Look at somebody say, it pays to be kind. Look at somebody say, you can defeat somebody's enemy. Somebody needs your kindness, yes. There's more. Yeah. My lungs, I haven't been able to breathe since I was 19 years old and accepted Christ because they radiated the heck out of me. I had Hodgkin's disease, fourth stage. During that time, i just gotten saved. I was ready to go to heaven. Lord, take me. I actually saw Christ. I had an experience. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, there's work for you to do. You got to go back. And I didn't want to go back into my body. I didn't. And I was sent back. The Lord dropped me back in the bed. I, could, I was floating above watching the doctors and yeah. stuff. It was so cool. Yeah. Anyway, um, they radiated my lungs to the point of almost killing me. I was 60, about 64 pounds when I came home. They sent me back to Plattsburgh to die. I didn't know I was supposed to die. Yeah. Everybody that saw me started weeping. I had no hair. I looked awful. And I say, I'm healed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I couldn't hold this arm up when I walked in here. I could not hold this arm up. It was Somebody awful. give God a praise. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> See, she's so good. She said, I love you too. You're handsome. <laughs> That's required for all of you to say. <laughs> no, seriously, it's not for real. Who else is already 100% healed? Come. Now, come. Uh, you can still get healed. Listen, God thinks he's God. And he wants to do it his way. And sometimes we have to wait on God and let him do it his way. And if he says, you need to stand there for 15 minutes, and then all of a sudden, bam, I'm going to heal you. Hey, he's God. We live in time. He lives in timelessness. Uh, what's your first name? My name's Steve. Everybody go, I feel like we're in an AA meeting. Everybody go, hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. <laughs> what was your problem? How long had you had it? I had uh, knee surgery, had knee, half knee replacement seven uh -huh. years ago. Uh -huh. And I'm carrying a lot of extra weight. And over the last couple of years, it's starting to get worse. Uh -huh. um, the wear and tear, they normally don't give you that much. You know, they say 10, 12 years is about, you know, the, the maximum. And then you're going to need another, you know, complete knee replacement. And it's just been bothering me more. You know, not all the time, but, uh, you know. You're healed. Somebody give God a praise. Bless you. Thank you. Who else is 100% healed? Uh, you and then you. You come first. What's your first name? No idea. Say it again. No idea. No idea. Interesting name. Where are you from originally? Jamaica. Let's give it up for Jamaica. <laughs> oh, yeah. And what was your problem and how long had you had it? Well, I always have pain in my legs. And while I was sitting there, I was feeling pain all over. Every night I can't sleep because of the pain. And when you talk, I was there listening, and I started feeling my legs getting less pain. Yes. And then I sat, and I still don't feel no more pain. That's why I get up. Yes. I wouldn't come up if I didn't feel it. Right. That's how I have Everybody it. say problem. problem. Sickness. Sickness. Promise. Promise. The Lord's your healer. The Lord's your healer. Provision. Provision. No, more pain. no more pain. Bless you. Come. Hello. First name? Amanda. Everybody go, hi Amanda. hi, Amanda. What was your problem? How long did you have it? I've had an unexplained migraine for the past week and a half, almost uh -huh. two weeks. Uh -huh. And um, it's not there. I, I came in, I, the lights were bothering me, the sounds, the clapping, even right up until I came up. Amen. And 
and then God just healed you. Somebody give the Lord a praise. Who else? 100% healed now. You? Let's do you, and then we'll do you, and then we'll come over here. Yes, sir. Where are you from? What's your name first? My name is James. And where are you from? I'm from Haiti. Let's give it up for Haiti. What was your problem, James? I came here this morning. I don't know what I was going to expect. But I have this arm. I've been in pain almost a week. And I've been having a lot of problems going on. I had my family take away from me. I have five children. They take them away from me. And my wife have a mental problem. And she's in the dark, uh, far away Saratoga. And he told me in order to have the children, I need to get divorced of her. That's what they told me. I don't believe in that. But I know God will help me. I've been crying all week because of my children. And I came here this morning. I, 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 I start crying. But when I hear the message of God, and I start feeling healing in my arms, I say, this is where I should be. Because God have a plan for me. But before they take the kids away from me, I receive a letter from Peter. I don't know if you guys hear Peter Papa. I received a letter. He told me this thing going to happen to me. But don't worry. God will help me. I want to pray for you. You got to stretch forth your hands. Lord, you're God Almighty. I want you to intervene in this man's situation supernaturally. I want you to fix it. And let him have peace. Let him forgive the people. Forgive him right now, brother. Forgive him. Forgive them. Say, Lord, I forgive them. And they're going to stay forgiven. Now, God, I release your angels. Lord, re you release your angels. And God, I release your power. To touch this, brother, and give him a supernatural peace. Here comes the presence of God. Ready, brother? Three, two, one. There it is. Lord, I thank you for releasing angels to bring his children back to him. In Jesus' name. Bless you. This side next. Come, sir. Yes, sir. What did Jesus do for you? Uh, my name's Ed, and I had uh, really bad tailbone pain for the past uh, several months. I sit down all day at work, and it was really hard to stay there and, and get up. And uh, I was testing it out over there. I was sitting up and down, and it, it works just fine. Somebody give God a praise. Bless you. You're much more nicer looking close up than you are for back there. <laughs> he said, I'm better looking the closer you get. Yeah. yeah. First name? Michelle. Michelle. I feel wonderful. What was the problem? I have multiple sclerosis, uh -huh. and I was not able to stand for a long time. I'd have to sit. Yeah. And the longer I stood here, the better I felt, and I didn't need to, to sit. Stand right here. I need a man to stand behind her. Put your left hand in my left hand. Yeah, that's good. Jesus, touch my sister. Heal her now. I curse this disease. You demon power giving life to it, out. I command every symptom of MS to leave her body. I command the cells, muscles, ligaments, bones, nerves be healed. Okay, who's 80% healed or 100% healed? 
Come on up, 80. Now, listen, once you get to 80%, you're really going to go to 100. Good. What's your name? Crystal. And what's, what's your struggle? I've had struggle for a lot of years. I couldn't even come to church for five years because I couldn't breathe. I couldn't walk. And at the end, I couldn't even feed myself. And I went to the hospital. And God just touched me. He just touched me. And he did something to my lungs. And the doctor said, I've never seen your lungs look that good. And I said, well, because God touched me. He said, well, what do you think is getting you better? I said, I just told you because God touched me. <laughs> what's, what's, what's the disease? I have everything you can imagine. No, just stay with it. With the lungs? Asthma. Okay. And now they've turned it to COPD. It don't matter. It don't matter. Give me your hand. Face me. Um, you remember Marilyn at Paul Kier's church, COPD. Huh? Yeah. She had COPD. She had glaucoma. She was sitting in a wheelchair. She, um, um, she's off. Uh, the lungs are fine. Um, healed of glaucoma. She lost 88 pounds in 28 days. She got out of the wheelchair. She's lost over 100 pounds. She's good to go. Another woman in uh, Illinois had COPD. You know, I've seen God heal it so much. Well, are you ready? I am. You ready? And you can take all the healings you need because Jesus is a healer. You ready? You demon power giving life to these diseases in this body. Out. And I command all these diseases, die and go from her body. And I command her lungs to be totally clear and healed. And Lord, heal her everywhere she has an issue. Amen. Who's 80% or 100%? Come on. Yes, sir? My name is Marcel. Um, Marcel, you got some muscles, bro. You remind me of how I used to be when I was young. Ain't nothing but a memory now. <laughs> Look at somebody say, but it's a good memory. <laughs> okay, brother, I, I have this sense of humor and a little levity is good. So uh, your name is? Marcio. And um, what was your problem? My problem was I have a lot of back problems. I've yeah. been having them since high school. Um, I'm about to be 26 next month. Uh -huh. um, when you told me to stand up uh, for like about five minutes, I started feeling uh, this warm sensation throughout my back. Yeah. And I started feeling a little bit better when I was sitting down there. It was really, you know, like just aching pain, you know, throughout my back. And I just kept on moving around. So, but right now I feel, I feel better. Mm -hmm. I still feel pain, you know, here and there, but it's not as. Uh, 10 being the level of pain before I had you stand and zero being no pain, where would you put yourself at right now? At a four. Where at? Okay, you ready? Do nothing. You guys can pray for him. Three, two, one, now. Huh? My legs feel weak right now. Your legs feel weak? It's not my fault. <laughs> uh, sometimes when the Holy Spirit comes on people, their legs get weak, okay? I command the muscles, ligaments, and bones be healed in the spine 100%. My body feels really heavy right now. Your body feels really heavy? Now, just so, just so that you know it's not my hand. Oh, no, I'm going to show you. Walk over there. Turn around and face me. Who's who's a couple of? Uh, are you strong enough to catch him? No, no, no. This is gonna mess you up. Some of you guys gonna have problems, but God told me I would point at people and He would touch them. And he would heal them. Look at me. Three, 
two, one, I release God's power and glory into your body now. You can try to stand up under it. Go ahead and just try. I release the kavod, the weightiness of the glory and the power of God into your spirit, into your soul, and into your body now. It's going to get stronger. Okay, who else? who else got healed? Come. Yeah. Well, Jesus, heal her knees. Okay, well, give her a meniscus and let that one be recreated right now. No struggle to breathe, she says. Come, sis, come, come, come. What's your first name? Um, what was your problem? How long did you had it? What did Jesus do for you? My name is Mary. I was hit by a car, I'm going to say, 35 years ago. And I've had nothing but back and neck and shoulder pains. But this shoulder, I have not been able to lift my hand up this high since then, pretty much. For 30 years? Without pain? Right. I don't know what it's going to take to make you give God a praise. Isn't that beautiful? Todd, you should take a few steps back. Come, woman. You catch, yes? Well, looks like you're, you're up. Ready? When I take my hand away, the spirit and the power of God is going to come on you. You ready? Three, two, one. Who's next? Who's 80% healed? Are you 80%? Okay, good. Oh, my sister from Canada. Montreal, yes? Yeah. What did Jesus do for you? What was the problem first? Um, I, I had a very uh, severe illness in October and November. I was struck with Legionella's pneumonia, which uh, caused me to have migrating arthritis in each uh, in each joint and it kept on happening with such swelling and such intense pain and I s learned that I could rebuke it and that I could say afflicting spirit be gone in the name of Jesus and it worked but lately it seemed to have come back and it came back last week with a vengeance and I thought it was because I overdid it, but uh, since then I'm limping again. I'm uh, got pain all over I in the joints. Yeah. And then this one starts to swell up. This my right hand. It incapacitated, and this knee is uh, now constantly ten being the level of pain before you came up, and zero being no pain. Where would you put yourself right now? About a three. Okay, you ready? No, you ready? Okay, here's what I want you to do. Say these words. Say, Jesus, I forgive everybody in obedience to your word, and I forgive myself for not being everything I wanted to be. And I receive a miracle of healing now. Now, you should get ready because the power of God is coming through my hand. I curse this disease. You demon power causing it out, and I forbid your return. I speak to all the joints and all the bones, and I tell you to be recreated and healed for God's glory now. 80%? 100%? Come. You should get ready. I'm going to let some of you guys sit down for a minute. I'll have you stand up in a minute. Yes. What's your name? I remember you. What's your name? Liz. And uh, what was your name? Liz. 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 Liz.
what was your problem? How long has you had it? Uh, since last year, my right shoulder has just been bothering me, pain constantly. And while I was standing there, I could feel this ball of heat right there. And I thought, oh, okay, you know. But I came expecting I wanted to be healed from it. And I could do this. And I can do this. Praise God. But the key is going to be, can I pick up my purse with that hand? Because my purse weighs a ton. So if I'm really healed, I'm trusting, I'm going to be able to pick. Is that Elizabeth? Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Pastor said it weighs a ton. If you can pick. <laughs> Come on, let's, let's see what God is doing for you. Uh, what's your name, brother? Jim King. And what was your problem? Uh, I'm a walking junkyard. Okay, you're a walking junkyard, but tell me specifically what uh, Jesus is doing. Well, before, when I came up here, I had uh, a lot of heat that came around from the back up yeah. here and all, all over. Yeah. And I still have the pain yeah. uh, somewhat in my hip. Uh -huh. But I've been having hip trouble because my hips are shot. Yeah. And the nerves going down through here. Okay, sciatic nerve. And also my shoulders have been giving me a lot of trouble. Okay, here's what I want you to do. Sit in this chair right here. I need you to come up. You to come up. That's all right. Yeah, let me have the chair. I need you to observe. Have we ever met before? No. Okay. I didn't think so. Now, this man had had a heart problem. Listen now. Share your testimony. Um, a couple, the last time Pastor Kemp was here, I was standing at the evening service greeting people when they came in, and, and Brother Tony came in, and I, we shook hands, and all of a sudden he just put his hand on my heart, and I didn't, it was like, new greeting, I guess, you know, and, um, <laughs> but I also know that he doesn't do that with everybody, so I, I figured he was praying for me, because I, I believe when he says angels tell him sometimes what to do. Um, I have a I have family in South Africa who looked at a picture and a prophet in South Africa said I had a heart trouble um, and I was having some issues with weight and blood pressure and, and what have you um, and, and I frankly I've forgotten the order of all of that all I know is that I went back to the doctor my blood pressure was good my weight was dropped and I have no idea if I even need to see a cardiologist I'm believing I don't but I haven't had any problems. Um, since then. Somebody give God a praise. <laughs> All right, put your back to the back, sir. Back to the back. Yeah, lift up both your legs. Let me have this one. Yeah, that's good. Let me have the other one. Push it back to the back. Let me have them. Relax, sir. Let me have them. Relax. Come, woman. Yeah, she got a problem. Hey, y'all shoot some in if you don't mind. Come over quick, quick. Uh, he's white. Come on, come, come. Look over my white shoulder. My white shoulder. The other one. <laughs> now, this guy is probably in fifth grade. Ready to begin. Is that two inches, two and a half? Yes, it is, Bill. Show them with your fingers. Lift them up high. The people on that side, on the other side, walk over there and show them. Is at least that. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Lord, let this old hip disappear. Let him have a brand new hip. Lord, let the angel put it in from the third heaven. I command that hip to be recreated. Watch the heels now. I command the leg to grow. And you demon power causing this sciatic nerve problem out. And I forbid your return. Keep growing. Keep growing. Keep growing. Keep growing. Keep growing. I command the spine to be healed, muscles to be healed. I command bone to be created, muscle to be created, nerve to be created. Finish it, Lord. Finish it, Lord. I command the pain and the reason for the pain to go completely away. More, 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 more. I thank you, Jesus. You're a miracle worker. Finish it, Lord. Finish it. Now, he's still about a little bit away, but, Lord, you go ahead and finish it. Do it 100%. I give you praise because, Lord, you're good and your mercy endures forever. 
I give you praise. Okay, now you're there. Okay. All gone? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Bless you. Amen. All right, I'll let you go. So, tell me. Let me have the microphone. You guys can stay here for a minute. So, um, what's your name? Franzi. What is it? Franzi. Where are you from? Montreal. Montreal. So, um. Sometimes we need to forgive ourselves. And sometimes we need to forgive family. And sometimes we need to forgive that woman and that man. Jesus said, forgive and you shall be forgiven. Will you follow my instructions right now? Close your eyes and say, Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I forgive myself. I myself. I forgive myself. And I forgive family. I forgive family. And I forgive everybody who hurt me. And I forgive everybody who hurt me. I forgive that woman. I forgive that woman. And I forgive that man. And I forgive that man. And I thank you, Jesus. That you forgive me, you forgive me and you heal my soul oh, now. Heal my soul now. <coughs> now, Jesus lives in me. Look at my eyes. God's power is coming through my eyes into your eyes. Notice what's happening in your physical body right now. What's happening? You don't feel anything yet. What do you mean? You still feel pain. Hold my mic. Push your butt to the back. Push your butt to the back. Lift up both your legs. Now, come and look. She's about an inch and a half. You ready? You know God said, yeah? You forgave yourself? Look at your heel. Did you know this? Did you know that it was short? I know. You ready? Do you believe Jesus has healed your heart? Did you feel like something lift up off of you? Huh? Say, thank you, Jesus, for healing my body. I'm going to pray a really strange prayer. I don't want you to pray. Look at me. Do not pray. And don't cheat. <laughs> you were cheating, weren't you? Say yes. Say yes. I know you was cheating. You demon power causing pain in the body. Out. I command the muscles and the nerves to be healed. Now,
Now, I don't know if y'all paid attention, but her leg just grew out. Tell me when you feel pain decreasing in your body. Y'all can go ahead and pray. Now, honest answer, is it the same, less, more? What is it? Did you have pain any other place? Actually, it started two years ago. It started with my feet. I woke up in the morning, couldn't walk. And mm. then after that, I felt something in my ankle. And then I felt my body falling here, here. My muscle mm. went kind of down. And then every every three, six months, there's another thing come adding. And um, it's, it's, it's so many, like, all over the place. The symptoms. Did you feel your leg grow at all? Yeah, it means God's doing something. Mm. Now, did you have pain in your back at all or other parts of your body? In my back, not really. It's like, it's like burning over my body all the time. Or sometimes mm. it's, it's, it's like a weird sensation of electricity. It's all kind of weird symptoms that are, you know, so many. So is it still the same, or has anything changed? I still feel the same. Same in that part of your body? Yes. Okay. Are you going to be back? You should come back. You been to the doctor? Yeah, for the past two years, doing all the tests. They don't see anything. Sometimes it's like a feeling of, uh, like, um, I need you guys to move back a little bit because I'm getting ready to do something. Yeah, give me your hand. Look at me. Do you believe God loves you? Will you receive his love? Yes, sir. Do you believe he loves you enough to fix this? I'm going to pray a really strange prayer. You ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. Close your eyes. Father, I want you to heal her basal ganglia. I want you to raise her serotonin level, her dopamine level. The serpent that's on her brain. The serpent that's on her brain, out! I command that dopamine level to come up, the mentolin, come up. You spirit causing this pain and this affliction and the swelling, out! I forbid your return. I command all pain, go from her body. I forbid your return. I had a demon I had to challenge. Sometimes you need to look a demon in the eye. Okay, has somebody else got healed here? Yes, come. You guys could take a quick seat. Sometimes we need to move around. It's good. We're going to stop it just a little bit. What did Jesus do for you? What's what's your problem? I am type 1 diabetic. Type 1. And I've been having this all my life. And a year and a half ago, I lost my my leg. Okay. Okay. And since then, I've been compensating with my left, and now it's crippling me. Okay. And it's just falling on bones. I have a really hard time walking. But it's about 40% better. You know what we should do? You're going to keep coming? Yes. 
Because we need to talk about how people can get healed of sugar and diabetes. How many people have sugar here? All right, we really need to talk about it, don't we? Okay, because you can get healed of that. Okay? So, um, come this way. Jesus, let the healing process begin right now. And Lord, she got bone on bone. Put a cushion in there. Let it be done now. <laughs> that wasn't your problem with stability. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Okay, who's next? Is she just with you? Okay. Bless you. Yes. I feel that I'm a work in progress right now. Yeah. I had pain in my head, sharp pains for several months. The doctor keeps saying, well, you know, you've got a bad neck. Well, I don't have a bad neck anymore when you were here. And, well, not this last time, but the time before my neck was healed. I, I just snapping and cracking. But the pain is, has been severe. And I naturally think of the worst all the time of what it what it could be. Now I feel the pain is seems to be going away. You know, I feel a little tingling and yeah, usually stuff. Yeah, you God feels that thing in his, in his feet. You know, so like I say, the rest of my body is a work in progress. I've got bad lungs. I've got asbestosis and stuff, so my breathing is bad. But, you know, I feel that we're doing Sta wonderful. Stand here. I need a man behind him. Behind him. You believe God will do it now? I rebuke these diseases. I command the lungs to be healed, this pain in the brain, out. And let his body be healed now. Are you guys in this line? You were, you were, or are you just hanging out? My name is Josh, and this entire time I've been, like, standing over there, I keep, like, getting on fire, and, like, I feel like my, I keep feeling stuff in my back, like, heat in my back, and I don't know if I have back problems or not, but you prayed for me last year. Yeah. Well, apparently you want to experience the presence of God, so give me your hand. Say, Jesus, touch me. Baptize me in your fire. Set me on fire for you, O oh God. Heal my body. I want to love you like I've never loved you before. Now take my hand away. The anointing's coming on you. You ready? Three, two, one. There it is. Let your glory saturate his spirit, his soul, and his body. Let the weightiness of your glory fall upon him now and let him have a supernatural peace and a supernatural joy now. Stay with him. It's going to get stronger. You guys just up here for fun? Yes, come. If God's doing something. Yes. Renewing the mind and everything. Yeah. And I could feel it a little bit. You could what? Something shifting in your head. Give me your hand. Close your eyes. Say, Jesus, touch me. Right now. Okay, here comes the anointing. Three, two, one. There it is. When I take my hand away, it's going to get stronger. 
come. We're getting ready to close and we'll come back tonight. Is God doing something for her? Yes. What's your name? Diane. And what was your problem? Mental problems, back problems, and nurses likes. And what has the Lord done for you? Prayed to help me, but haven't succeeded. Ah, you want me to pray for you? Oh, okay. Well, I can do that. <laughs> Close your eyes. Say, Jesus, touch me. Jesus, touch me. And heal me now. Heal her brain. No, no, no. I'm going to pray for you. Jesus, heal her brain and heal her body now. God's power is on you. It's going to get stronger. Release a gift of healing. For mental illness right now, Jesus. All right. My, somebody want me to pray for her? No, I'll come your way. After we pray for her, we'll pray for her. You pray, and then we'll, we'll, we got to quit for today. Come. What is it? I got Gillian Barrett. I got Gillian Barrett syndrome. And what does that do? It's uh, her immune system it it has starts starts attacking her immune her immune system. And the doctor said it was gonna take a, a year. Uh, is, can she come back tonight? Yes. Come back tonight, cause I need to talk about something that's gonna help you. This. No, I, I, I um, remind me, I need to talk about how to get your immune system here. Remind me tonight. Because, hey, how many of you are having problems with your immune system? Okay, I need to talk about that tonight. Um, I could pray for her, but it won't fix the problem until we get something else changed. In other words, our healing won't last if we don't do this the right way. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, I want to pray for her, and then we need to quit. Six o'clock tonight. Yes. Let's stand up for 30 seconds and give God a praise. 30 seconds. Thirty seconds. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, it started. The healing has started. No, don't, don't worry. Um, you're gonna get feel better and better and better. Come back tonight. See, when it's healing, the Greek word for it, when, when Jesus said, you'll lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover, the Greek word for recover means from the moment hands are laid on you, you get better and better till you're completely well. And so when it's healing, it takes time. When it's a miracle, it's bam. We like the miracle. Now, you're going to be here tonight, yes? So I'm going to make sure I pray for you tonight. You make sure I pray for the UK tonight. So listen, we have to do um, immune system, and what else do we have to do tonight? 
Oh, sugar. We have to talk about how to get healed of sugar. Add that too. We can cover it. Um, let me share this with you. Um, that was a boy. He was 14 years of age. He was totally blind in both eyes in the hospital. He had something called rapid aging disease. You get the point. Well, Jesus touched him. Matter of fact, I didn't pray for him. This, um, the boyfriend of the boy's mother approached me. I was at a conference. I had responsibility. So I gave a cloth, and I said, the boy will be all right. That was on a Friday. They put the cloth on Sunday, God speaks to him and says, everything will be all right. Both his eyes that were blind popped open. His rapid aging disease disappeared, and they discharged him from the hospital. So God can do it. Here's our thing. Um, just because you pray for somebody and the first time you pray for them, nothing happens, it doesn't mean anything. Um, Anybody here ever ha heard of Mahesh Shavda? Raise your hands, Mahesh. Mahesh, Mahesh was a high-level Hindu. Jesus appears to me, gets saved. He's, he lives over there in uh, Charlotte. Real strong healing ministry, miracle ministry. A woman comes up who's totally blind in both eyes. He prays for her. She goes down in the spirit, gets up still blind. It happens about five more times. The seventh time or the eighth time she goes down, she gets up, she can see everything. Later on, he's saying, Lord, what happened? And then he gives a vision, and, he, and an octopus-like creature was on her, and every time he prayed, one leg went off. And when the last leg went off, her sight was restored. This is why we have to keep praying. Okay, we got to shut it down, y'all. But we're going to be back at 6. Um, anybody have any idea how many people got healed today? No, it wasn't no 13. It more than 13. Todd's going to check for us. He'll give us a, an approximate estimation. 21. Give God a praise for 21 people getting healed. How many of you enjoyed the word today? Amen. Because, see, in the end... It's the word. All right? Uh, Pastor, I'm going to turn it over. Pastor, I'm going to turn it over to you for comments. And uh, give God a hand clap as Pastor come. Yeah. God bless you. Goodbye.